There's tractor trailers backed up down by the... Hey everyone, what's happening? Today we're going to be starting a new unit. We're talking about square roots of perfect squares. And we've got a few things to remember here, all right? I'd like you to draw a square right here. And I want you to label this square an S and an S. That stands for side. So if we want to find the area of a square, we would find the inside of this square. And we can do that by going S times S, which is going to give us S squared. All right? That's just like saying if we put some numbers to this, and we had 3 and 3, and we put 3 across, and 3 up and down. Well, that's just like saying, what's the area of this square? Well, we have 3 times 3, which is 3 squared, or 9 units squared. All right, And that's the inside of our square. So we have some perfect squares here. Well, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Now, we can do this with any number. It's just itself multiplied by itself. So 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25. This is what you need to do for homework. I'd like you to fill in the rest of this sheet. All right, let's move on. So areas and sides of squares. Well, we have a side of 5 centimeters. So let's draw our little square here. If this is 5 and this is 5 centimeters, well, our area is the space inside, and we just go 5 times 5, so it's 25 centimeters squared. And we have to make sure we have that square in there because it's 2D. It's a flat surface. All right. Now, it's the same thing. We just multiplied by itself. So we're going to multiply 6 over 5 by 6 over 5, which is 36 over 25 meters squared. Same thing with the decimal. That's like saying 0.7 times 0.7. So we know that 7 times 7 is 49. And we have a decimal in there, so it's 0 0.49 millimeters squared. Next, we've got 8 over 3 centimeters, so it's going to be times by itself. And we're still working out the area inside a square that has a side of 8 over 3 and 8 over 3. And we get 64 over 9 centimeters squared. Next, we have... The side is 8 meters, and the other side is 8, so we get 64 meters squared. And next we've got 2.4, I mean 1.4 decameters, so 1.4 times 1.4 is 1.96 decameters squared. All right, now let's go backwards. Well, what's the opposite of squaring something? So squaring something means multiplying something by itself. Well, what we want to do now is we want to find the number that makes our area. So if we have a square of with 49 meters squared, what two, what number multiplied by itself equals 49? Well, 7 and 7. So the side of our square is going to be 7 meters. And there's a special thing we can do for that. We can take the square root. And so that finds the number that multiplies by itself to equal our area. All right, so what two numbers multiply to 25 that are the same? Well, 5 and what two numbers multiply to 64? 8. So we'd be, it's like saying 5 times 5 is 25, 8 times 8 is 64. So our side is 5 over 8 centimeters. Next, we've got 0 0.09 millimeters squared. So if that's our area, our what number multiplied by itself equals 0 0.09, 0 0.3 millimeters. Next, we've got 144 over 81 meters squared. So what number multiplies by itself to get 144? So we get 12 times 12 equals 144, and 9 times 9 equals 81. So the side of that square would be 12 over 9 meters. Next, if we have the area of a square is 121 centimeters, each side is going to be 11 centimeters. And next, we've got 1.69 meters squared. Well, the square root of that, or the side of my square, if the inside is 1.69 meters squared, each side is going to be 1.3 meters. All right. So squaring a number is like finding the area 
of a square. And square rooting a number is like finding the length of the side of a square. So square rooting a number is like finding the length of the side of a square. It is the inverse of squaring. I also like to say the opposite. Right? It finds the number that multiplies by itself to equal x. Right? A perfect square is a number that can be written as a product of two equal numbers that are rational. And remember, rational means any number that um, is a terminating decimal or any number that can be put into a fraction. All right, so let's calculate the number whose square root is 3 over 8. So what that is asking is if we draw a square, and this works for every single square, what number whose number is what number is the square root? So we've got 3 over 8 here, 3 over 8 here. We want to know the number that if we square root it, we get 3 over 8. Well, we just go 3 over 8 times 3 over 8, and we get 9 over 64. Next, we're looking to see do we have what number do we get for the what number can we square root to get 1.8? And we just go 1.8 times 1.8 and we get 3.24 units squared. All right? I'd like you to turn the page, please. And we've got a visual example of 3 eighths and 3 eighths. Well, what we have then is we have 64 squares altogether and only 9 of them are filled in. All right? So 3 over 8, 3 out of 8 times 3 out of 8 tells us that there's 9 out of 64 squares colored in. All right? So out of the 64 squares that we have in total, only 9 of them are colored in. All right? Let's try a couple one, other ones. We're going to ask ourselves, is which one of these fractions is a perfect square? Remember, a perfect square is a number that um, when two numbers are multiplied, they equal it. All right? So um, 8 is not a perfect square if we refer back to our sheet, nor is 18. But we can reduce them. If we divide them by 2, we get 4 over 9. And both of those numbers are perfect squares because 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. So yes, we do have a perfect square. Next we can look at 16 over 5. Well, 16 is a perfect square, 4 times 4, but there's no number multiplied by itself that will equal 5. So no, because there isn't a number um, that can multiply To five, and I'm going to clarify that there's no, there isn't a rational number. All right, last two here. Is each decimal a perfect square? Well, we can go back and we ask ourselves, what is a perfect square? Well, um, two numbers, one number has to multiply by itself to get to that number. So we want to get 625 into a fraction. So we're going to move our decimal two spots. And that means we're going to put 625 over 100. We've got two zeros there, and they represent these two places. And so 625 is a perfect square. If we look back on our sheet, the front page of the sheet, 25 times 25 is 625. And 10 times 10 is 100. So yes, this is a perfect square. You can also put this into your calculator, square root of 6.25 equals 2.5. Now, you'll also see that 25 over 10 is the same as saying 2 and 5 
tenths or 2 and 1 half, which is the same thing as saying 2.5. Next, we're going to ask ourselves, is 0 0.627 a perfect square? Well, we have three decimal spots that we need to move. And we're going to get 627 over 1,000. And we ask ourselves, is 1,000 a perfect square? It is not. Two numbers cannot multiply. One number cannot multiply by itself to get to 1,000. A rational number, sorry. And nor can 627 be. So neither can be written as a product of a single number. All right. Well, bring that sheet into class tomorrow and have a fantastic evening.